and joining me now, Mario De Pena, who's one of the petitioners in the same-sex marriage case. Mario, uh, great to be uh, you know, talking to you. It is, of course, uh, Pride Month, so this entire question is coming up. The Supreme Court's reserved its verdict while you and the other petitioners wait for that verdict to come out. What is your thinking? What are you actually expecting could happen now? Well, we're all hoping, uh, Vikram, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, we're all hoping for a positive outcome of uh, some, some kind. Uh, that outcome can be anything from a simple declaration that marriage is a fundamental right uh, for all Indians. Uh, or it could be something more substantial where the learned judges, you know, weighed into all the rights that married couples are given in this country. And may they may make an intervention to say uh, that these are the rights uh, that queer people also uh, should have. We're hoping for something on that range. Um, I think the judges have been extremely fair to both sides. Uh, in, in the hearings in the Supreme Court. Um, and as activists, of course, we have nothing but hope. Right, Maribel, at this point, I guess everyone sits and looks at what is the body language, what's likely to come out. A lot of what is said in court often does not go into the actual judgment. So what's in the actual judgment uh, is not something we'll know until it is delivered. But um, when you take a look at some of what is being discussed around the entire question, obviously, there seems to be a certain amount of sympathy on questions like dignity and respect and uh, how people should be treated in a, in a sensitive manner. Other questions are around what can happen technically, what should be left to parliament, what happens to the specific nitty gritties of succession and adoption and what happens legally to that and what the Supreme Court can, can say. So, when you're expecting, what are you expecting out of this? Is it basically the question of respect that should somehow be addressed? Yes, absolutely, because it's always been a question of dignity for the community. Um, you know, very often people, you know, there was a discussion in the in at some point uh, between the the chief justice and uh, the solicitor general, and they were thinking about some, you know, giving some kinds of rights, perhaps. Uh, in terms of pensions, uh, gratuities, um, and they were trying to explore what, to what extent the government could step in. Uh, and I think uh, while something like that would be great, of course, I think it leaves out the question of dignity that marriage grants to all citizens who, you know, ask for that right in India. And so dignity is very central uh, to to our to our demands of the Supreme Court. Mary, absolutely. Look, the question of dignity, the question of respect, I really don't think that's too much in doubt right now, especially after that landmark unanimous judgment on Section 377. The question of dignity and respect, I don't think it's something that is in doubt, and it is something that hopefully is going to come through uh, in the verdict. What would it take in the verdict for you to say, OK, we've got what we wanted from the point of view of respect and dignity and sensitivity? From the point. It is, I, I, for, for us, at least within the secular laws, when we're not making a claim on the religious laws or on the personal laws of this country, uh, at least within the secular laws, to say that we have the right to, you know, to get married to the people we love. That is, that is extremely, extremely important for us. When the Special Marriage Act was being discussed in the Lok Sabha in the 1950s. You know, Pandit Nehru actually talked about how it how he hoped that most Indians, even those who are not covered uh, by the personal laws, would you know would uh, approach uh, the local officials to get married under the Special Marriage Act. Now, perhaps he didn't imagine queer people approaching local officials to get married in that way. But uh, at that time, it was mostly people who, you know, who weren't covered by the religious or the caste laws of their time. So perhaps that we weren't in his imagination, but actually we do fit 
that definition. All right, Mario, thank you so much for joining us. We will, of course, keep on talking about this, and we'll certainly talk once the actual verdict comes out, and we'll be, we'll be trying to analyze it. Uh, let's get a slightly different perspective on all of this. It's a great pleasure now to be joined by Swapan Das Gupta, who's been writing extensively on this entire question of same-sex marriage. He's also, of course, uh, a senior BJP uh, leader. Uh, Swapan, uh, thanks so much for joining us. We're, of course, waiting for that Supreme Court judgment and for that verdict to be delivered, presumably being written right now. Many people are saying it could be a landmark judgment one way or the other. What's your own thought process? What's your expectation on this verdict? Well, initially, I, I was under the apprehension that uh, we would probably uh, have a judgment which is so radical that it will be difficult for society to digest. And, and that stemmed from some of the initial remarks uh, made by the Chief Justice about, you know, gender, etc., about not being... You're, you're talking about the time where you said there's no absolute man or absolute woman. That That's what you're referring to. Exactly, you know. So gender is not determined by birth, is what he, he, what he uh, said. You know, quite radical stuff like that. And, uh, well, subsequently, I think things have been brought to a more even key. Now, there are various issues which really have to be de decided. The first one, which to me is very, very important, is that a legislation, uh, uh, that uh, enactment of the extension of marriage to the same, to, to same sex couples necessarily involves a redefinition of the very notion of marriage itself. It's a dramatic, it's, it's, it's not an insignificant modification. It's, 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 it changes the fundamental concept of it. Now, whether such a thing, whether such a uh, reinterpretation can be affected by the courts or it needs a wider forum, notably parliament, to discuss. Now, you, you can well say, why has parliament been evading its responsibility. And I think that that's a very fair question to ask. Because on the question of the decriminalization of homosexual relations, for example, 377 of the Penal Code, it I believe it was should Parliament which should have decriminalized it. But Parliament refused to get into to that debate and allowed it to go to the courts and allowed a court judgment to set the tone. Now, are we going to see such a thing happening again here? So I think, but the point is that the demand for same-sex marriage has actually not come in any significant way from, from the ground. There have been some small activist groups and concerned individuals who've done it, but there's been no real stirring on the ground, unlike three, the question of 377 and the question of decriminalization of uh, homosexuality. This has not happened. So we are caught in this thing. Are we imposing a minute agenda on society? Okay, Shapan Dasgupta, let's just look at two specific things. That, For example, the petitioners and others we've been speaking to are saying, number one, it's a first and foremost a question of dignity. So allow something to happen that allows us to live with basic dignity. That, that's part A. Part B, yes, help us in dealing with some of the issues that come around our lives. Issues of inheritance and succession and all those many, many complicated issues that require a practical solution. Which, for example, is something that the Central Committee could be helpful with. It could try and find a practical answer to those practical issues. But if the judgment comes which says, give this, these particular communities a certain sense of dignity to people who want to be in some sort of a union, and want to live in a union with dignity, would there be a problem with that? No, I have no proper problem with that. As I said, a civil partnership, anything which says that these are two, we, we, we shall treat these two individuals as an item, as a couple, whatever you, what um, you want to call you, you can use any... How about spouse? Any, any sort of uh, terms for it. Uh, but, but, but the important thing, thing is marriage. You know, the definition, whether, whether we should call it a marriage, you can call it a civil partnership. You can call it a partnership. I have absolutely, and the question of dignity, I believe is right. They deserve that. That's a particular 
lifestyle they've chosen. That, that's a life choice they've made. And they deserve to uh, be respected for that because they made it consciously. Now, whether the rest of society agrees with them, we, we cannot outlaw prejudice. You un understand that. So there will be prejudice, but at least there'll be no prejudice. Uh, but that prejudice will be tempered by the fact that at least there has been some recognition that this is a legitimate union. So you're saying that there should be a judgment that actually makes everybody happy by allowing same-sex unions to be there with dignity. Just don't call it a marriage, is what you're saying. Call them spouse or something else, and that you feel were, would be okay. Is that what you're saying? Let's not go the full hog for the moment. Okay. Because I think you need a wider consultation in society. You need to look, look at all the implications there is. And you've got to realize that India is also a deeply conservative society where you've got to go at things in phases that the most radical elements of society cannot set the tone. That's really what, all I'm going to say. Exercise cautious, be circumspect in what you're doing. Keep in mind the dignity of individuals, but keep in mind the sensitivities of society also. All right, Shapandas Gupta, thank you so much for being with us. We will, of course, wait for that verdict and then analyze it in, in some detail once it actually happens. Mm -hmm.